very uh, disheartening now with the uh, sustainable development goals. Um, I see that uh, instead of really improving, uh, we're really going backwards, mm -hmm. and especially for women doing the hard work mm -hmm. of agriculture. And yesterday I was in the meetings where all these uh, uh, talk and almost like preaching was about engaging more private sector into yes. the lives of yes. women. And, I, and for us that experience has been really terrible because um, it's been like a slave work for women. And they're not given any opportunities for education and or social services of any kind like health services and we're carrying the burden mm. of this model and I think uh, the sustainable development goals are perpetuating this model and even in encouraging more uh, of the companies to do and for example we produce native seeds at home we have bank of seeds and, and women are carrying this issue and so we're fighting against big corporate world uh, keeping our, our our native seeds and having banks to protect them and uh, all that knowledge is not either encouraged or value but now it need, wants to be privatized yes. more and more so uh, we're really fighting against a huge monster who is not really uh, interested in, in, in improving or investment, investing in any of these especially crucial issues like uh, the development, the participation of women and, and keeping their roles uh, value as they should. And so for me these past two days have been more of um, uh, discouraging governments have uh, uh, very very notoriously uh, corrupted and all the aid is going to these governments through corporations so it's a very scary picture and so we need to fight more and more to get this uh, our autonomy our uh, people's protecting of the territory women in front lines because a lot of men are jobless or they sometimes have to go far away so we are the women are protecting the the value of the culture of our uh, you know inheritance especially the knowledge and so I think rather than being happy with this results uh, as civil society we see the danger on these conversations between private sector and and the governments and of course we have almost no other way but really collecting ourselves and putting with the strategies to work unified so uh, my dedication is more to sharing this and to the value and enhancing the value of and the work that we do especially as women and to our children, to our grandchildren, to the people who don't know what's going on, to people who have only food in their tables every day but they have no idea where it comes from, how hard it is and how difficult and how the, the corporate world is taking over and, and, and using all types of pesticides and fertilizer that are killing the environment. And I think it's like another language is almost like an uh, entirely a different perspective of mother earth of our resources our lives our you know the wealth of uh, uh, humankind there's no matter how uh, hard we scream they're not going to stop because this is the, the model uh, that a lot of countries are following and rather than we going back uh, you know improving and developing in other ways in our areas we're really decreasing in the in the way we treat each other especially earth human kind so it's pretty scary we, uh, it's, uh, we have like I was telling you how important the the issue of, of the land and the resources well that's not encouraged because the knowledge of women is not value and 
the the opposite is like a lot of land grabbing, a lot of um, of the pollution of rivers of water, and how bad this is. If people don't understand that how difficult for women to carry water home. You know how many hours to to do just basic work. You know to washing to take care of kids or, or the elderly. Uh, when the water, who is so important, is so far away or so polluted, that so it makes it more difficult. Or, for example, cooking good food requires uh, fuel, and we don't have any resources anymore. A lot of them are taken over by big corporations, especially the forest. So, no access to to have um, good food, but also to have fuel to cook the food. Like, for example, our native food is uh, black beans. To cook black beans you need uh, at least four hours to cook. So you need fuel. So you need your forest. You need to land to re replenish the forest. So then you have... So you imagine women delivering kids with no sources of, of beans, which is protein, uh, iron, vitamins. So the health of women and then carrying the babies is, is decreasing uh, and the, the burden of carrying water from so far away or polluted water around, it's, it's like an everyday issue and people are not really understanding this. So the work at home is, is, is worse, the burden is heavier and the solutions are not, you know, out there. They're, they're so it's like three discrimination, you know, being women, rural, and indigenous. You know, even the language, they call it a smart agriculture now, with implying that the, we were playing a stupid agriculture, uh -huh. or, uh, you know, like you have a smartphone and the others are stupid phone. I, this, this language of discriminating uh, what we have done so far, and we have fed the world, like Guatemala, exports so much food to the United States and the European. We are the f first largest cardamom okay. producer, mm -hmm. the fourth producer of sugar cane, uh, the first producer of broccoli in the world. And uh, we're feeding everyone but ourselves. There are people, as we speak, dying from hunger in my country, two hours from Houston, two hours from Miami. Not in Africa. We're right there. Yes. And we have people and kids dying from uh, hunger who are malnourished, chronically mal malnourished. So their development is going to be difficult, if nil, because they haven't had enough nutrition when they're growing in, with, you know, the nine months with the pregnant women who have very bad uh, nutrition uh, because we're selling food outside. Yes. We're not eating it. Where uh, our our governments are interested in producing African palm and destroying the environment, destroying the rivers, uh, fish are floating on the rivers, and the the pesticides they use uh, they last uh, up to ten years minimum in the, in in the in the water or in the soil. So they're destroying uh, Mother Earth with no mercy. Mm -hmm. And at the top of that, then, then they blame. They say the women are, or the people are lazy or they don't, they don't like progress or they don't like uh, to see the future. They are in the past. You know, so uh, I think these issues are like uh, discrimination, discriminative, not, uh, like I say, not valued all the effort, you know, to make uh, and domesticate seeds, you need at least 9,000 years. 60 years ago, we, everything was organic until the, the Green Revolution. Now they, they made a mess. And now they say, okay, we have an answer now. Smart agriculture, more of the bad. So it's getting worse. And the sad things, and I think since it, it goes to Africa, your program, uh, it's that Africa, because Latin America has become a middle income, uh, so-called middle income. So we don't, we're not recipients of anything. Thank God, because a lot of it is worse. 
But Africa is a target now for the second uh, green revolution. Mm -hmm. And everyone is even e e excited about it. And I'm like, for God's sakes, this green revolution means more destruction and more uh, privatization, land and resources in the hands of a uh, of, uh, corporate uh, world. I've been in Nairobi and miles and miles and miles of pineapple for dole and no food for the people and then 800,000 people in a neighborhood in, 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 in Nairobi from people who have been land, land grab and they have no place to grow anything but there are miles and miles and miles of, of pineapples for foreign countries you know Guatemala is a producer we are center mega center of species and we're and we are malnourished. We're mega centers of uh, DNA of all kinds of, of foods, you know, from tomato is from there, hot peppers is from the Mesoamerica, corn. We are the land of corn, people of corn. And now we import corn from the United States. We import wheat. We don't have any wheat. The wheat was brought by the Spaniards, but we, we had being eaten bread, but now all our bread comes from the wheat from the United States. Mm -hmm. And uh, people have all these allergies to gluten, to this, to that, because all this is uh, modified, mm -hmm. genetically modified. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Latin America has a lot to, to share with the world in terms of uh, struggling. And, and, you know, we come from a 36 years armed conflict in my country. We have peace accords in 1996. So we, that meant a lot of intervention from the United States, but also a lot of fighting back from the people. So we're not kneeling and, and we're defending culture and, and values and the food. So there's a lot of uh, sense of um, dignity and I, I want to share that because we're not uh, totally dismayed. We're working really hard. And especially women, you know, up front with the, you know, seeds that we grow, things that we have been growing for hundreds of years, you know, since the Maya uh, classic period, you know, it's been like 9,000 years of domestications of, of food. And so we're very rich that way. And because we're rich, because we have so much biodiversity, that's what the companies are there. Where there's biodiversity, that's what they want to do. The, uh, bioengineering, they want to do the privatization because we have water, we have resources. And so we're very uh, lucky in one way because we're very rich, but then we are very. Uh, at the same time. Yeah, because that's where all the interest is. is. That's where people want to do business with our things. And exporting our knowledge, exporting the, the seeds and making other medicine for example and then sending it back to us package and like tomatoes do or you know Italy has more varieties of tomatoes than Guatemala and we are the center of origin of tomatoes for example they got the DNA from there you know the originals mm -hmm. the, and they make all these varieties but we don't have uh, we are importing sometimes seeds you know commercial seeds the United States uh, kind of like practice experimenting uh, in the 60s during the, the Alliance for Progress and all that stuff. They introduce all the commercial seeds. So we're depending on seeds now from companies. So the battle is between keeping our native seeds and commercial seeds and of course they genetically modify. Because the idea is to depend, you have to depend. This is the, the when you control the food, you want to control the people. When you depend on somebody's food, you can obey them easily. Whoever controls your stomach controls your will, your willpower. So this is a controlling thing. This is a neo-colonization with the controlling the food. So we need to continue producing our own food, eating our own food, our own cultural food, you know, that I like Indian food. I want to go to eat 
native Indian yes. food or Pakistani or, you know. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I, I value. And I hope people understand that, the value of, of keeping our own foods and value. Because the, this, this whole era now with this sustainable development goals means more colonization and more control of our stomachs and our will. And that's very scary. In my country, we have uh, good examples of how easy it could be to, to connect the issues and to make sense of what's going on and why so much poverty when we're so rich. Yes. Why we're so malnourished when we produce so much food. Recently we have uh, the legal system have no other choice but close one company because all the fish were dying for kilometers and kilometers. You have tons and tons of fish floating. Mm -hmm. And so the destruction is, is you know, from many ways, you know, destruction of the water, um, destruction of the, all the biodiversity around rivers, uh, drinking water for the people, I mean, it's phenomenal. Uh, it doesn't get to the news anywhere, and I think it's happening everywhere, uh, in Asia, in Africa, you know, the African palm is, is it, it's like a top now, like novelty for the, for the rich, for the oligarchs in my country. And they also have the sugar cane for ethanol, for the green, uh, green uh, energy, energy they call, which is like, uh, and their mentality that's clean because they don't see their people around. And the, the destruction of earth is, is in, in their hands and they're very dangerous because they don't care. They don't have any connection like people do. Uh, the only connection is the money and the profit. So, um, very dangerous people handling the resource, natural resources, natural wealth. And I, the, the sad thing is that everywhere where there's a lot of rain, that's what the, the African palm grows very well. Mm -hmm. And but the destruction is proven. It's like at least 25 years, and it's like desert and all the contamination lasts, you know, for hundreds of years. So I don't know how sustainable that mm -hmm. could be, yes. which, you know, they, they call this sustainable, sustainable. agriculture. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's, it's really kind of like a joke. Um, but it's not a joke for the people around, yeah. basically, to, to be able to hold on to resist, we need to secure the food. So we can stand there and, and, and fight back, mm -hmm. but full stomach. So that's why we keep the seeds. Mm -hmm. Seeds is an important issue for us. My, my idea of these goals or my feelings about the sustainable goals are um, very depressing, if you could say, or very uh, saddened or disheartening because there's like absolute no inclusion of, uh, of all these conversations and so-called uh, consultations and civil society. They had a plan since the beginning and that doesn't really engage or I implicates civil society concerns or worries. So it's all uh, a show. I could not expect anything from the UN because I think it's a UN itself is, is co-opted by transnational uh, big business. You know they. So it's really uh, uh, not the 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 space that we should be talking to. You know. So sometimes I feel like I don't even want to come here because I, in a way, we legitimize their their work you know, they say oh we, we we talk with the people we were interactive dialogue uh, and, you know and it's uh, and I, I don't like that because I don't want to be used by by any of these uh, pr procedures as they but uh, I think I my strong message will be that only the people save the people and we have that in Spanish, it's solo el pueblo salva al pueblo. 
Only the people save the people.